please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi there, good afternoon. This is Your Stocks. I'm Mangla Malu. With me is Sumera Avdi. Sumera, it's a good afternoon because uh, we're virtually sitting closer to the higher end of today's trading range and the mid-cap index has also recovered, currently trading with slightly higher gains than the frontline indices after a lot of underperformance in the early part of the week. Well, that's true, actually. So uh, we're wrapping it up in style. Let's see how that's next true. week unfolds. We have all the all-important uh, state elections in Karnataka as well, which will be the biggest trigger, of course. But means it's ladies special on your stocks. Our two experts, Rajesh Agarwal and Prakash Kaba, join in to answer the many, many questions that are being sent in by our viewers. So, gentlemen, good afternoon to both of you. Let's get started. Our first caller is through to us. Shiraz Kirawala is on the line with us from Gujarat. Hi, Shiraz. How can we help you? Yeah, hello. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Uh, ma'am, actually, I purchased one lot of 150 shares yesterday morning. Okay. IB, IB Ventures. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, my net uh, disconnected and the price gone very much down. Okay. So just I want to know the forecast that shall I hold it or shall I uh, liquidate it in today? Yes, Okay, well, uh, uh, Prakash, let me come to you on this because this is really quite an unfortunate situation and I can imagine that it, uh, you know, could have happened to somebody. Her, she lost connectivity and wow. uh, now <laughs> I know you can't help her out with connectivity, but uh, on this stock, any advice? This is a professional hazard. Yeah. It's, we have to accept it. But one thing for sure, if you're wrong, you're out. If you're in loss, you're out. Simple. You, nobody, you don't have to ask anyone. You just have to do it. You didn't have to wait for until today morning. You could have done it this morning itself. Out if you're wrong. All right, as clear as it gets. Out if you're out. That is the word coming in from Prakash Gaba. Let's move on to the next one. We, I, I believe uh, we have Ashna M writing to us from Punjab. She wants to buy 50 shares of Sun TV for the long term. Wants to know what is the right time to enter the market. So let's go to Ra uh, Rajesh on that one. Rajesh. Sun TV due to report numbers, but there is a valuation discount between Sun TV and ZTV. Between the two, which one would you recommend? And is this the right time to buy Sun TV? See, I would not see it's the right time to buy uh, Sun TV. Yes, mm -hmm. It can be a very good uh, long-term investment, but and uh, if one has a long-term horizon, I would say accumulate on depth sort of strategy on this. You said it's right, the numbers are due. Uh, and we believe that uh, there would be around 14% jump here on area on the bottom line. And the kind of investment they have done in commission programming, which will start showing results in coming years. Moreover, digitization in Tamil Nadu would be a, a big positive trigger. Uh, IPL is another positive trigger, which is mm -hmm. going to uh, give good numbers in the next one year or so. I would say we keep a horizon of 18 months, invest in the stock, buy on debts. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Prakash, uh, uh, you see much upside for Sun TV? I see, but the best place to is to buy around 700 zone. If it comes down there, that's an area which is safer. So far, I would say it's into a dip. It can see some more dip. If it comes down, that's a buying zone. I don't know. I'm not saying it'll come down there, mm -hmm. but if it comes down there, that's the place to buy and hold for long term. All right, uh, up next we have uh, Hazel Jennifer who's on the line with us from Karnataka. She has a query on Grain Industries. Hi, Hazel, how can we help you? Hello. Hi, good, uh, good afternoon. Yeah, good Go afternoon. Ahead. Yeah, I had bought uh, Rain Industries at 365, 45 quantity. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my question is, uh, now it's dipped down, should I hold on or add on to it? Okay, um, Prakash, this rain industry has had a phenomenal last one year, but uh, in the calendar year, it's not done much. Uh, for somebody for whom it's a loss-making investment, uh, what do they do? Put a stop, protect it. If it mm. falls further, you're out. Because I see some kind of correction here. The best place to put stop is around 300. If it holds 300, fine, because that's a very strong support zone. If that breaks, you should be out. If it doesn't break here, mm. that's why he put a stop. Where do you exit? Close it around 360, 370 zones. That's the stiff resistance zone as well. So exit around those zones and hold. 
All right, uh, stop loss at 300, hold at current levels. That's the word coming in on rain industries. In the meanwhile, just keeping out on the markets, they're extending gains the Nifty, Sensex at the high point of the day, and Hindustan Unilever, the big boy from the FMCG space, at the high point of the day, reports numbers on Monday, the street working with a 6 to 8% volume growth. Given the numbers that came in from the FMCG space yesterday, this is something that the street will keenly be watching for. But let's move on. We have Rohini Glaswala writing to us from Mumbai, holds 500 shares of Canara Bank at 310 rupees, holding for the last three months. Long-term investor wants to know whether to hold or sell. Well, Rajesh, Rohini has bought Canara Bank and sitting on a loss of close to around 32,000. Uh, PSU banks, what do you think is the future? Do you think she should add more for the long term or maybe just recognize this as a loss and move ahead? See, addition is out of question at this point of time. Right. We have seen numbers of Indian Bank and Indian Bank coming uh, very recently, and the numbers are pretty bad. I don't expect anything positive from Canbank numbers also. And the entire PSB piece is suffering from overhang of asset quality. Every quarter one believes that the worst is over, and again something creeps up. So it's better to avoid the entire sector as such. Although uh, the stake sale of Canfin homes would be a positive trigger for the stock, and I would say. Wait for some spikes to exit. Well, uh, the market certainly moving now to the highs, uh, 170 points higher on the Sensex and the Nifty now higher by about 54 points. Look at ITC, so that stock has uh, uh, picked up pace up nearly a percent. Now LNT is the other one up about a percent and a quarter and both of them sitting with a good spike over there. Grassim, Tata Steel, Ultratech, Z, all, uh, they're the other stocks which are now heading higher. We have a query coming through. Uh, Bharti Maglani is now on, uh, sorry, she's written to us from Pune. She holds 380 shares of Dalmia Bharat, which she has bought at about 3,200 rupees odd. So she's making a very small loss. Um, she's been holding on for four months, but she is a long-term investor and now needs advice. Rajesh, what would you tell her? I would say if your funds allow, add to the stock because mm, mm. the fundamentals are very strong. You look at the numbers, the numbers have been good. They have um, uh, manufacturing facilities at 11 different locations, 25 metric tons of capacity. They are pioneering super specialty cement and not to forget 74% holding in OCL. Uh, the company has been reducing debt and that's going to add to the numbers again. I would say add on to the stock. All right, I don't add on to the stock that's as far as Dalmia Bharat is concerned, but we're getting numbers, I uh, think, in fast. Rain Industry is a stock that uh, was put on the query list by one of our viewers, has reported their numbers. A sharp expansion on the net profit, uh, 251 crores versus 59 crores. Need to know whether this was factored in already or not, given the sort of rally that the stock has had over the last one, one and a half year going forward. It's most important. Prakash's view on the charts to our viewer was 300 is the stop loss going forward. It can move higher. But uh, let's let's take it to one of uh, an important stories that uh, we have right now. Honda. That one has started this financial year by beating Bajaj Auto to actually become the second largest motorcycle player in the country. Utkarsh Chaturvedi gets us the numbers and the interesting analysis. Utkarsh. Uh, so, Mangalam, last year, uh, last financial year, Honda and Bajaj were almost neck and neck. But Bajaj was ahead of Honda when it comes to the market share in the motorcycle space. Now, uh, this month, if you look at April, uh, Honda has uh, beaten Bajaj to become the second largest motorcycle maker in the world. In fact, the market share of Honda is now 17.27. Uh, in fact, uh, and uh, Hero continues to be 49.43. Uh, Bajaj is somewhere around 1% down, uh, around 16% is what uh, Bajaj market share is at this point of time. If you look at last year, uh, both of them were in the vicinity of 15%, but there were some points uh, different between between Bajaj and Honda. Uh, looking about the whole uh, two-wheeler sales, even Honda is uh, closing the gap with uh, Hero Motor Corp. So if you look at the April month, uh, there's only a 2% gap with uh, Honda being at 32.47, Hero being at 34.67. They ended the year with a 6% gap where Honda's market share was only 28%. Now remember, we cannot do a month-on-month -month comparison because last year it was the month where a lot of restocking happened because of the BS3, BS4 Supreme Court order. We cannot really compare month-on-month uh, uh, -month from April last year, but in the next two months we'll really get a, get a clear picture. Will Honda really continue this pace? One more important thing for Honda is that they do not have a lot of capacity and they have a capacity constraint. They are trying to push their capacity from 6 million to 6.1, 6.2 in the current game, but they have not yet really uh, gone ahead and announced any capacity addition because they are waiting for 2020 and BS6 to come in before the really market changes. All right, Utkarsh, thanks very much for joining in with those details. Let's shift focus to some more queries. Then, um, 
Pooja G writes to us from Nasik. She wants to invest about 30,000 rupees in Havels for the short term and wants to know what is the right time to actually enter the market. So they came out with numbers uh, uh, just a short while back. Operationally, uh, uh, the quarter looking good. But uh, Prakash, for somebody who wants to invest for the short term in Havels, what's the advice? Well, buy it now. Have a stop below 500 or 480 and just continue along it. If you want to have a tighter stop, just have a stop below 540. If it's a short term, it's a good company, basic structure positive, buy and hold. I think 480 is a very, very strong support zone to hold for long term. All right, uh, buy and hold Havels, that is the view coming in on Havels. But let's move on. We have P. Saluja writing to us from Chennai, holds 2,000 shares of IFCI at 30 rupees for the last five years. A long-term investor wants to know whether to hold or sell. Rajesh, you know, IFCI, uh, uh, the stock has underperformed uh, financially. It's not done too well. The money that it's given, the asset quality has always been been questionable. But uh, the only the only sort of attraction that people have with IFCI is the stake that it has in NSE. What is your view on this stock? You said it right, uh, Mangalam. The only saving grace is the holdings in NSE, stock holding and the sort of... Otherwise, if you look at the numbers, the numbers are pretty bad. Full year, there was a loss. Quarterly numbers, low profit. Market has gone, cap has gone down to uh, around 3,000 odd crores. I think uh, given the asset quality, uh, and there is no hopes on the operation side. But yes, the holdings give some hope. And if one wants to hold on, and just because of that holding, uh, one can continue uh, maybe for a target of 25, 26 rupees in the next one year. Okay, it's flirting around at the high point of today's trading session. The pharmaceutical stocks, they are fairly unwell ahead of uh, Trump's speech on drug pricing. So they're feeling the nerves because if you take a look at the Nifty Pharma, that one's down about a percent and a half. Much sharper cuts seen in individual stocks. Sun Pharma, for instance, should come up for you down 6%. Cipla is currently down about 2%. And uh, we have Lupin 2 from the Nifty, which is currently at the low point of the day. So that is something we'll keep an eye out on. But talking about pharma, our next query is on Biocon, I believe. I think uh, Ritu Chopra writes to us from Assam. She holds 50 shares of Biocon at 510 rupees for the last one year and five months. She is a short-term investor, wants to know whether to hold or sell. Biocon, among the pharmaceutical stocks, has been a relative outperformer. Prakash, how does the chart look at current levels in the larger sector? I think it's a good chart. Basic structure is positive. It's been going up constantly. No sign of weakness is yet. If someone is holding it, just have a stop. Just have a stop below 600 and continue holding it. Who knows where it goes, but I think it's up. If you get corrections, those are buying opportunities on Biocon. All right, Natasha Khetan now writes to us from New Delhi. She says she holds about 100 shares of Aditya Birla Fashion at 141. Uh, she's been holding on for the last uh, three days, she says. Uh, she is a short-term investor and wants to do what she should do at these levels. So she's making just a tad bit of money, Prakash. Bought about three days back. Uh, is there reason to remain invested? Uh, AB fashion? Yeah, certainly. It's given a buy signal generated today as well. I think I like the stock. Formed a good base, consolidation. And once it crosses 155 zones, I think it'll go up other the business of fashion. In case she, she wants to have a stop, have a stop below 143 and trade long. I think the place to sell is around 170. All right, 170. That's her trade for three days. That's the word coming in from Prakash. Asha Srivastava, she writes to us from Hyderabad, the holds 320 shares of Syntex Industries at 31 rupees a piece for the last six months. Long-term investor wants to know whether to hold or sell. Uh, Rajesh, for Syntex Industries, what's your view? I would say sell that stock because uh, the numbers are not that encouraging. The uh, industry they are into are fabrics and they are, although they are a strong uh, player and planning expansion, they have a good clients like Vanish and Mark and Spencer and all those things. But again, the numbers are not that encouraging and I don't find any reason to believe that and there would be any positive surprises in the numbers in coming quarters. So I would say just exit the stock. All right, exit uh, the uh, stock. All right, that makes sense. Prakash, your quick take? Certainly, 100% exit. Weak structure, one shouldn't be in the stock. All right, uh, well, that's uh, uh, the final answer. But let's shift focus then to some more news flow that's coming through. The Indian retail space really has been on everyone's mind after global giant Walmart bought out Flipkart. Lata caught up with Kishore Biani to get a sense of the group's store expansion plans, uh, what their 2020 revenue targets could look like, and a whole lot in between. I think 2022, we think 2021 to 2022, we should be 100,000 crore business that's what our internal targets are 
and uh, that's what we are working towards. You, you once, uh, not so long ago, gave us a target of 20,000 crores revenue for future consumer alone by FI21. Is there a new target? I think so. I think uh, we, we, we are, but we are sure we are surely in the race of doing 20,000 crores in by 2021 in future consumer. I think that company is growing at the rate of 40 to 60 percent in multiple categories. There are multiple factories which are started and are in the process of starting up. I think that is the most exciting piece of business which we are doing, which is growing at virtually 50, 60 percent now. What's your store expansion plan now? How many this year and how many next, say, in the next two years? I think our plan is to add up 1,000 uh, small stores over the next 12 to 15 months. Our plan is to open up another 35 to 40 big bazaars. Our plan is to open another 50 to 60 brand factories. And uh, there are other FBBs. I think there are 60, 70 FBBs coming up this year. So that, I think uh, one of the larger expansion plans for us. Mr. Biani, you referred to your, uh, you know, financing your consumers a couple of times. I thought you were actually going to, uh, looking to exit from your insurance business because it's not your core business. Aren't you looking for buyers there? Should we hear something? I think there was a time when we thought uh, insurance is not core, but with the way the digital world is shaping up, it seems that uh, our customers uh, can be converged into insurance in a very significant manner and there is a lot of value which can get created and our insurance businesses are already doing quite well and it is not sucking in any capital at the moment so we are quite happy with the way our general insurance and life insurance has shaped up and is shaping up okay well uh, just to come back to this entire issue would you say we have reached a watershed moment in indian retail uh, will the next five years be more game changing in organized retail than say the previous 25 years I would agree with you, Lata, that uh, the consumption is taking a very different turn. Our aspiration index is much higher than our affluence index. Credit will be the next uh, fuel for growth for all of us. A lot of new category launches are happening. Uh, and we are seeing some, some kind of uh, something happening structurally to favor modern and organized retail uh, for us. And we believe the best is now coming up. And we have laid the platform to make this happen. And there are more players coming in. I think that should help uh, and hasten up the whole process. So I think what has happened in the last 25 years will definitely happen, in, if not in the five years, at least in the next seven years. OK, seven years is not a, a very long time for one to wait. Uh, one final question. How many organized players can this industry have? See, telecom looks like is space only for three at best. What about retail? How many can this organized retail hold? I think in the larger, in the larger scheme of three, uh, I believe there will be three ecosystems which will be dominating the landscape of India. The first ecosystem has been formed with the physical and digital, which is Flipkart and Walmart. Let's see what alliances they come up with, a alliance with Google investing, or we'll see some alliances there. The second, uh, I think we have our own ecosystem. I see that. Uh, ecosystem there and I see maybe another ecosystem coming up three ecosystems somewhere people will align to some ecosystems all right so that was Kishore Biani of the future group uh, detailing his plans for the future but in the meanwhile just keep an eye out on the markets a couple of stocks they're moving higher Mahindra and Mahindra should come up for you that one's at the high point of the day the pharmaceutical index still at the low point of the day and in the mid caps century textiles that's the one that one is currently testing the highs some bit of profit booking by the shorts after the 13 percent cut that we have seen but with that it's a wrap on your stocks but before we do that we'd like to thank Prakash and Rajesh for stopping by and giving our viewers all the advice that they needed on their stocks uh, Thank you for watching. Closing Bell comes up next.